and welcome to our first edition of a beginner's guide to Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Adobe Camera Raw as a software platform for doing some great work in post-production in all your photography. The things that you can use it for and the tools that you can use it with, all the exciting things that make this a great little program uh, for post-production. So first of all, what exactly is Adobe Camera Raw, Raw and how can you get it? Uh, well, Adobe Camera Raw is not to be confused with the raw picture format that your camera, uh, you can set it to take. Uh, Adobe Camera Raw is a little bit different. You can use the raw picture format, but that's not exactly what it is because it allows you to work with various different type of digital picture files, including raw picture files, uh, JPEG and TIFF as well. And what Adobe Camera Raw does is it basically allows you some great amount of artistic control uh, while working with these files but it maintains the original files. It's, it's a non-destructive program. So that means as you're working with these files and you save them, your original picture file is always going to be there. So you can always go back to it. Uh, it's a non-destructive uh, program for working with pictures. Uh, and that's why it makes it so great and it's a wonderful tool. Now, where you get Adobe Camera Raw is uh, it's prepackaged with Adobe Photoshop and uh, Photoshop Elements. Uh, so if you have either of those programs, you'll probably notice that Adobe Camera Raw comes with it. Uh, it's very similar to uh, Lightroom, but it's not quite the same. Lightroom is a little bit more of a robust program uh, for doing everything. Uh, it does do some of the things that uh, Adobe Camera Raw does, but it does more as well. So usually what you do is you have Adobe Camera Raw in conjunction with Bridge, Adobe Bridge, and you use kind of the two together uh, to work with your, your flow, uh, your workflow for your camera um, production, your photography production. So here we have uh, opened up already, we have Adobe Bridge, uh, and it serves kind of as a jumping off point for getting into Adobe Camera Raw. So I got some pictures up here. I have my layout and the way in which I want it. I have it in the film strip mode, uh, but you can do a lot more things in Bridge. You can set it to uh, the essentials mode. Uh, we'll have a lot more information about uh, the exposure and the camera and the, uh, the aperture size and all those kind of things down here if you so desire. Uh, the metadata mode is a little bit different here. You can uh, have your ratings and your labels, the size of the files and, and so on. But uh, usually I leave it in film strip because uh, I want to use Bridge to kind of get a good overview of what uh, pictures I'm working with uh, in, in a very large format. So another nice thing, just as a side point in Bridge, what you can do uh, as you click on the files, if you want to see them in the full screen mode, you can hit the space bar uh, and that will bring up the picture in a full screen mode. So that's kind of a nice feature of Bridge as well. You get a very, very good picture of it. So. So here are a couple uh, files, a couple photos uh, that we're going to use and we're going to be looking at uh, at the Adobe Camera Raw and just briefly, just a few tools, we're going to be looking at the uh, the white balance uh, and the histogram. So what we're first of all going to do is we're going to open up our very first picture in Adobe Camera Raw and to do that uh, you have a few different methods. methods. You can use uh, Command plus R on the Mac or uh, Control plus R on the PC or you can right click on the file and choose Open in Camera Raw. So we're going to be using uh, three different files here. So I'm going to select all three and then I'm going to right click and choose open in camera raw. Now our photo will come up here. And the first thing we want to look at um, is, uh, is the histogram. Now the histogram uh, is one of those tools where it can sometimes be a little bit um, confusing, uh, a little bit intimidating when you first see it. I know when I first took uh, photos with my HP one megabit uh, pixel camera back in the past, um, I looked at the, the histogram and I saw it for the first time. I thought, wow, that's really interesting, but I'm never going to use this tool because it just looks way too confusing. But there is a lot of good that can come from using the histogram and a lot of things that we can see from the histogram uh, that if we do get a, an understanding of what it does, it's going to be making our production uh, a little bit easier or we're going to have uh, the ability to see where problems are from the histogram. So we'll be able to adjust them with some of our other tools here. So really what the histogram does is it shows kind of the whole level of, of light and the RGB values of, of your image. Uh, in the white here, this is areas where uh, there's equal amounts of uh, red, green, and blue. 
uh, in these uh, kind of blue and cyan and magenta and red. These are kind of areas where there's uh, overlap of two different color channels and whatnot. But it's it's really not that important to know that unless you're you're big into into printing and whatnot. But what it is basically in effect is it shows you all your colors of your of your pictures on the left hand side here. This is your shadows or your dark colors. It goes along through your midtones. Down here on the right, this is your highlights or your, your really bright colors. So you can see from a quick look at the histogram kind of what the picture looks like. Uh, how much you have in the shadowed area, how much you have in, in the white area. And it also shows something very important, and that is on both ends of the histogram, we have what is called the clipping uh, occurring. So this is if you have, uh, in your highlights, you have some colors that are 100% uh, uh, colored, or the white has no detail, it's 100% white. Uh, this is where you're going to get clipping in your highlights area. On the other hand here, we have in your shadows here, if you have these these spikes, this is where it's 100% black or uh, you can't see there's no detail in those areas. So those those can be trouble spots that you want to look for. And that's why taking a quick look at the histogram, first of all, um, is a good idea. Now, what we can see here uh, from our spikes, we have what looks like a, some white here and a little a spike of red. On our shadows here, we have a really big spike of red. So what's that's basically telling us is that we're having some clipping in this photo that's occurring in on various colors here in the white spike and then in the red channel here. And in the shadows, we have a very big red spike uh, that's occurring where we're getting clipping. Now, just looking at that really doesn't tell you a whole lot. Uh, this is where these little triangles up here in the corner of the histogram come in really handy. Uh, and they'll allow you to see almost instantly the clipping that's occurring. So let's go over here and let's click on this leftmost triangle. And this will show us the shadow clipping. Now, when I turn this on, you probably won't see any any difference at all because there's really very little clipping occurring in, in the shadows area. There's very small little amounts of blue here that's telling me uh, that there's some clipping occurring in there. Now, if I work on the exposure here and I turn it down... Uh, you'll notice that the clipping is going to start occurring more and more. Not a whole lot, but by the time we get down to the very dark exposure, here we see we have some clipping occurring right there. So that's where there's no detail at all, and you don't want that in your pictures. And you'll notice how your histogram is now entirely almost to the left uh, in the shadowed area. So clipping in the shadows is going to highlight in blue. Let's double click that to send that back to the original. So now when we turn on the clipping in the highlights, we're going to see an entirely different picture. Now when we turn it on, we see, whoa, there's quite a bit of clipping occurring. We have here on the back of the horse, we have here up on the flag, and so on, uh, on these banners and whatnot, uh, where the clipping is occurring. So that tells you a lot. That uh, would tell you that as you go along, you're going to want to recover some of the detail that's being lost here. Uh, do the clipping. So that's where you're going to use these uh, sliders, exposure, recovery, fill light, blacks, and so on to kind of get some of that detail back. But we're not really going to get into that today. Suffice to say that uh, that's a good little thing to check, first of all, uh, to see where exactly you want to bring back some detail by looking at these clipping areas, so turning that on and off. So that's basically the histogram in a nutshell. It tells you a lot of the detail that's going to be uh, going into the picture. So we're going to look at just one of our tools, one other tool, and that is this section here of the white balance tool. Now, when you take a picture, uh, it has to try to discern what exactly is white. And that's the job of the sensor in the camera uh, that says this is, a, this is a white object, and then it can correlate that to the rest of the picture to tell us what the other colors are supposed to look like according to the light that the picture was taken under. So for example, if uh, you take a picture of a white piece of paper um, in a candlelit room, the, the camera sees the white piece of paper with perhaps an orangish or a yellowish tint to it, and it, a hard, it has a hard time discerning that it's white. The same thing can be said is if you take a picture in a tungsten lit room or, or a room with fluorescent lighting, uh, it might have a cooler or a bluer tint to it rather than white. So after we take the shot, sometimes we have to go in and uh, change the white balance so that it more matches closely to what exactly uh, we saw or the colors that we saw when we took the picture originally. Now with RAW, the nice thing about it is you can uh, take the picture and it really doesn't apply 
uh, any white balancing to it, or, or you can strip the white balancing out completely and, uh, and, and change it to whatever you want. So you have a few different tools for working with raw photos uh, in white balance. You can leave it as the as shot feature, or you can choose from several of these other white balancing features, which you often find right on your camera as well. So you can choose auto and see what happens. Sometimes it's nice to check with that. And then, well, we see auto really didn't do anything. We can switch to daylight. We can see it, it warms up the picture a little bit better. We can perhaps choose cloudy. It's a, a little bit more yellow. We can choose shade, tungsten. This will blue it up uh, quite, uh, quite a lot. Fluorescent will also give it a little bit more of a magenta or purplish tint, uh, flash, and finally the custom is one that you'd set it to yourself. So let's just leave it as as shot because I want to show you another tool here up here in the corner and this is the white balancing tool. And this is a little, looks like the little color picker uh, eyedropper from Photoshop and what it does is, it was when you use it, you want to define in the picture where you're going to sample from to set the white balance. So things that uh, are a neutral gray or things that are a, a white uh, are things that you choose to uh, to make sure that you have the right type of white balance. Now in this particular picture there's there's quite a bit of white on the horse here. Um, so you can go around and, and say click on the horse and see what happens. Okay that cooled it down a little bit if you can tell that. But uh, where I want to choose from what is actually a nice neutral color is often uh, blue jeans. Uh, they are often a nice neutral color. So let's click here on the blue jeans and this will pick up uh, a lot more yellow and a lot more brightness. Now this was more like what the colors were like when when I shot this picture at the parade here. Uh, it was a nice sunny day uh, with a lot of warm colors in it. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to click that. You're going to see uh, that what happened over here is the temperature was adjusted, the tint was a little bit adjusted and, and it really warmed up the picture nicely. So this is more uh, like what the picture was. So that's a simple click on a neutral area uh, to set the white balance. And uh, sometimes what you'll find in, in photography, you, you'll, you'll purchase these little gray cards, these 18% gray cards. And, and what they're great for is if you're, if you're taking a studio shot, or you're taking a shot where you can set it up uh, to get the right white balance. Uh, you, you take a picture of the card uh, before you start your photography, and then you can use that as a reference point for the type of light that was falling on that card as a white balance, and you'll apply that white balance to the rest of the pictures uh, that were taken under those light conditions. One other thing I'm going to do here just quickly is that uh, we got kind of a blue or a white fall off here in the corner of the picture. I'm just going to crop that out uh, using the crop tool. We'll get into the crop to a little bit more detail in another screencast, but I'm going to set it to a two to two to three aspect ratio, uh, and just kind of crop that out because that's uh, very very annoying. Uh, bring that down and maybe pull it back a little bit there, and then you can hit enter to to set that. So there we are. So this is just a very simple uh, setting for white balance. You can continue to adjust your white balance. If you thought that that was a little uh, little too cool, you wanted to warm it up some more, you'd bring in your yellows and you'd really brighten that up. If you thought that maybe there's a little too much purple tint and you want to you want to bring it back into the greens, uh, you can do that as well. So in effect, what you're going to have uh, is is a picture that's a little bit more balanced to the, to the light in the in which you shot the picture. You can always tell if you're not sure that you've really done anything uh, with the white balancing. You can always use the the preview button up here in the corner, or you can hit the uh, the P key on your keyboard to preview what it was before uh, and what it is after. So you can see quite a bit quite a bit of difference there. It's a lot warmer now uh, than than previously. So using that uh, white balance tool, clicking on a white balance area uh, and setting a nice uh, a nice tone for the picture like that. Now just to show you as well, we'll bring up a JPEG picture here and you'll notice something uh, different in the JPEG pictures because when you're shooting in JPEG, the, the camera actually applies whatever white balance setting you have in the camera to the picture uh, and it really limits uh, your options what you can do with white balancing. Uh, so for example here in the white balancing area in the as shot we only have auto or custom. We don't have any of those other options like we do when we're shooting in raw format. Um, so if you set this picture to be tungsten lighting and it's uh, got a very blue cast and you bring it now into Adobe Camera Raw, 
uh, you're not going to have the ability to take off that that white balancing. You're going to have to do it manually. So you want to make sure and be careful when you're shooting in JPEG because it applies uh, the white balancing to embeds it into the photograph uh, file. You want to make sure that you pick the right one uh, while you're shooting. So just one more example. We'll we'll go to this picture here, another picture. There's a lot of gray in this picture, so you'd think that you'd have a lot of different uh, options for picking our white balance, and you probably do. Some people have said that uh, grass can sometimes be a nice neutral white balance, uh, so you can test it out. Maybe hit a piece of grass here. Uh, you'll find, though, that in this case, it doesn't do a good job at all. It's uh, way too blue, way too much magenta and cool, so so that wasn't a good choice. But the nice thing about it, like I said, it's, it's a non-destructive uh, tool, uh, so you're not you know changing the picture in any way you're just you can click in any other area and set your white balance somewhere else so instead of that uh, some uh, let's try maybe the sidewalk that's a little bit better there uh, you can try some of the maybe the neutral grays here in the bark in the tree there you are that's a nice a nice warm color so you know click around and see see if you can capture uh, what it was like when you shot the picture uh, if you forget exactly what it was like then you can hit your preview on and off there's really not a whole lot of difference uh, in this preview here if we hit in the uh, in the sidewalk we'll probably see a little bit more difference in the preview but not a whole lot just a slight different uh, different tint so using that uh, white balance tool uh, using our histogram here we can we can look at that to see if we're having any issues with clipping and then using our sliders if we want to you know tweak it a little bit in the temperature or the tint areas is very handy so uh, just a quick uh, tutorial there on setting white balance in our beginner's guide to Adobe Camera Raw